All right, for today's video review, we're going to be taking a look at Transformers 2007 movie deluxe class Landmine. Uh, this is one of the few figures from the 2007 movie line that I've really wanted to pick up for a while. It's just one that I never got as a kid, and uh, yeah, I've always kind of really liked the design of it. And he's got some pretty neat features, I've got to say. I'm definitely enjoying him now having him in hand, even though I've seen like plenty of reviews kind of talking about how this guy's like a little bit mediocre, but I don't know. He really, he really kind of does it for me. <laughs> it just works pretty well. Um, but yeah, no, he turns into this nice little military dune buggy mode. I'm sure this was one of the vehicles that showed up in the, in the 2007 movie because a lot of the, uh, you know, non-movie characters from that toy line were like transforming versions of the just other vehicles that showed up in the movie. Um, but either way, it's a really nice kind of like dull greenish gray, bluey color. Um, it's got some nice, you know, like details all, all over it with all these little uh, painted tampos and whatever, whatever, you know. <laughs> Of course, he's got the uh, the Autobot logo with the angry eyes there from the from the movie, which I've never really liked. But you know, it's it's subtle enough that you you hardly uh, notice it. Um, he does come with this one weapon here, which uh, does attach to his vehicle mode. Uh, you can just plug it onto the top right here, and it becomes like a little you know gunner station. There is a, even like a a little cutout down here for a hypothetical person to stand and actually man it, and it can rotate around and then kind of hinge forward and back. It's a pretty cool little gun here. I have found that this uh, on my copy this bit is pretty loose which is a little bit annoying but you know it in in most orientations it kind of sits just fine via gravity um, but yeah another really cool feature that this guy has is that uh, all four of the wheels actually have working suspension for whatever reason like <laughs> there's just so many interesting things that were designed into this guy and I'm not really sure why it just feels like whoever was designing it was really having a good time but yeah, it's uh, you know, it's honestly hard to notice unless you're specifically trying to activate it. The front wheels are a little bit easier, but since the back wheels are also on these joints anyway, sometimes they just like compress, uh, you know, on those, and it doesn't really feel like the suspension is working. But yeah, no, he does have working suspension. There's springs in all four wheels, which is pretty neat, honestly, and is not totally necessary. So it's kind of a cool thing that they did. Um, I like how he's got little like uh, gas canisters or something sitting in the back here, which believe it or not, will actually end up becoming the robot mode feet, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, he's got little chairs in there, which will actually end up becoming the uh, the robot mode hands, which again is pretty cool and not totally necessary, but he had, he does actually have a, uh, you know, kind of reasonable interior in there. It's sort of hard to see from most angles, but you know, it's in there. Um, but uh, yeah, no, pretty cool uh, vehicle mode. Um, the one thing that does kind of annoy me is that these bumper pieces on the back do have a tendency to kind of pop off their little joint here. They could be glued in place and it would be fine. But, you know, that as I got him, that's how it works. But, you know, if you wanted to, I mean, I'm pretty sure this is the orientation they're supposed to be. And they definitely look better in this orientation when they're like kneecaps in robot mode. But if you wanted to, if you wanted the bumper to sit a little lower, you could flip these pieces all, uh, around so it kind of sits more like that which i i don't know which is more accurate I, i'm fairly certain it's supposed to be the other way because if you look at this bumper piece the uh, the rounded section is on the top but this does kind of seem like more of an appropriate place for a bumper to be placed i don't know i don't know anything about this vehicle i'm assuming that this is the accurate most accurate way is the way that it's designed to be but you know if you wanted to flip it around you do have that option since those do just kind of a uh, tab in there um, but yeah in terms of a comparison in vehicle mode here he is with kingdom sideswipe just to show him off with a uh, standard size modern deluxe and uh yeah that's pretty much it for the uh the vehicle mode here uh, to get onto transformation, you can just leave the gun there because that's kind of where it will end up in robot mode as well. Um, but first thing you want to do is take these panels and just kind of untab them from the back here, which allows you to take this whole section and flip it around like this. You want to take the bumper and it kind of like just slightly auto morphs up in terms of like pushing these blue panels in a little bit, which is kind of neat. And those will be the knees. Then you can take the wheels back here and each of them independently are on sliders and then they'll just rotate down and this tab will go into this slot right here, just like that. And you can take the toes. Uh, this one canister will just rotate down like that till it snaps into place. And then this other one will rotate around. And weirdly, this guy also has like little wheels on the canisters, which, you know, then pair with the back wheels. So he kind of has 
roller skates for some reason. Like usually they try to block off the wheel rotation when the wheels become part of the foot design, but they really kind of steered into it by giving him extra wheels that didn't even necessarily need to be in there, which is a little strange, but cool. And then we can just untab the legs here. And then for the arms, basically what you want to do, these sections are on springs. They kind of spring inwards. So you want to just unhook them from the wheels here so you can bring them out like that and let the wheel compress in just like that, kind of come out on these armatures. Uh, and then you take the, uh, the arms here, this bit will rotate down and then you take the seat, rotate it down and around like that. And then take the, uh, the inside of the seat here and just open up the uh, the little claws so the seats can become his uh, hands, which is always a design I thought was pretty cool. It looks maybe a little bit awkward, but honestly, I like his weird kind of chair claw hands. I think they're kind of cool. And you kind of want to just like straighten out these uh, these little armatures here so there's enough clearance to take this uh, this top section here. And now that the wheels are compressed in, you can rotate it down like this, allegedly. It's like getting, oh, it's getting caught on the gun here or something. Yeah, I guess you have to bring these up a little bit. I've not had a problem with this up until this point. <laughs> um, what's, uh, what's going on here, bud? Get caught in the head? Yeah, okay, it was getting caught in the head. But yeah, you just want to bring that down and then tab it into place. You kind of have to bring the armatures up a little bit. Then you can just rotate down his head and take this panel that was covering it and just rotate it onto the back. And then you can take the gun here and it'll kind of just hinge up so it sits over his shoulder. And there we have Landmine in his robot mode. And uh, yeah, no, I really like his design. I've always really liked his weird sort of like all spark blue caged in gunmetal gray head sculpt here. I think it's just really unique and doesn't look like quite as, you know, pile of knives as a lot of the movie designs do. It's definitely like weird and it doesn't fit in like perfectly with like generation style figures, but I feel like it's more capable of fitting in with that kind of design than a lot of the, uh, you know, movie aesthetic figures. Um, but yeah, no, I really like him. Definitely the arms look a little bit awkward because like he's got like these tiny little forearms and these giant hands. Uh, and then these like pieces that kind of bump into the wheels, which are ostensibly some sort of cheating, which just didn't need to happen since he's not actually based on any design, but like these are meant to be, you know, like one of the bumper sections, even though both bumpers are clearly visible. I I don't know why they would, <laughs> they get in the way, they don't look particularly good and they're an unnecessary bit of cheating. I don't know, I don't really like those bits. I guess they can be some sort of like internal roll cage or whatever. They don't have to be part of the bumper, but yeah, I don't know, That that's always just been kind of weird to me. Um, but yeah, no, otherwise a pretty cool looking design here. Uh, in terms of articulation, yeah, the head is on a ball joint, so he, he doesn't get that much rotation just because he bumps into his little collar section here, but you can have him, have him look straight up, which is nice. He does kind of have, no, I guess he doesn't have light piping. I was just seeing the silver piece in the back there. Yeah, no, he does have, I'm pretty sure there are clear plastic pieces that are like making up the interior of his head sculpt, but he doesn't have the bit in the back to like actually let in the light, so I, I don't know, kind of strange, but whatever. Uh, the shoulders are on ball joints here, which can rotate around like that. Additionally, you do have that uh, separate outward joint there for uh, part of the, you know, transformation armature, but you don't really need it. Um, he has uh, ball joints at the elbow, which give him a bicep swivel. Uh, and then another, you know, it gives him a little bit over 90 degrees of bend at the elbow. And then another ball joint at the wrist, so his hands can rotate and rotate up like that. And then this part has a, a hinge right there and a hinge right there. And then this part also has uh, two hinges. So you can get some pretty pretty good variety of uh, claw poses here. They are always claws though. They're not like ever really hands for the most part, but that's okay. Uh, he does have a waist cut there. Hips are on ball joints. They can go forward and back and out to the side. Mine were pretty loose, like not super floppy loose, but just a little bit looser than I'd like. So I did tighten them up with some uh, some clear nail polish there. So they feel a lot better now, but they were a little bit loose. Um, he's got a thigh swivel, nice deep knee bend just because of how it folds up for transformation. And then no uh, side to side ankle tilt, but his feet can tilt forward and back, even though it's made up of like two or three different parts here, which is kind of neat. And again, he does have those wheels there. I don't find that he like really feels like he rolls around all that much. Like you can definitely can get him to roll around, but I feel like if you're really like pushing him on the ground, then these wheels just kind of like untab and, and collapse up like that. So I don't know what effect the uh, <laughs> the little canister wheels really have at the end of the day, but eh, you know, at least he's not like falling all over the place. Uh, you can unplug the gun and because he's got like these posable claw hands, you kind of, get him to hold it you kind of have to like bring it down like this 
and like have you know a lot of that section just kind of like sitting out in the back uh, but he can kind of hold it it's just like awkwardly sticking down like that but yeah you know it, it's a it's a possibility it's just i don't think looks as good as just leaving it over his shoulder personally i feel like it just looks uh, a bit better there but you know that's uh that's an option if you want to do it um but yeah in terms of uh the comparison in this mode here he is again with Kingdom Sideswipe, just so you can see how he stacks up next to a uh, modern deluxe, pretty pretty, pretty tall deluxe by today's standards, which is not surprising since figures have gotten a little bit smaller over the years, but he's not like humongous or anything. But uh, yeah, no, not a whole lot else to say about this figure. He's a uh, a pretty cool toy. He does he does have a lot of like highlights of that, you know, classic all spark blue from the uh, from the time period that are just kind of like all over him which honestly I think is kind of charming. I know that it was always kind of like a weird ostentatious choice at the time, but I kind of think back fondly on the uh, the AllSpark Blue era of toys where there's like a lot of figures that otherwise were kind of like reasonable color schemes just had little pops of this like bright sky blue. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I like him. I, I like his robot mode design. I like his vehicle mode design. I think the transformation is fun and interesting. He's got Fairly decent posability, all things considered. Um, I like the head sculpt. I, I think that the features are neat with like the working suspension and the little rolly wheels in uh, in, in robot mode. And I feel like the, the gun has pretty good integration, even if it's loosened up a little bit uh, over time. But yeah, no, I, I'd say, I don't know, like his arms are kind of a strange looking design in robot mode, but that's the only real complaint I have about this guy. Otherwise, he's just a pretty fun little figure. And I don't know why he wasn't, you know, quite as popular at the time because uh he's pretty cool but uh yeah that's pretty much all there is to him if you uh, enjoy my videos make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel i do reviews every tuesday thursday and sunday make sure to check me out on my instagram account that's toys.n.art and without further ado here we have transformers movie one deluxe class landmine